January the 16th? Yeah. January the 16th. That's my daughter's birthday right there. Whoa! <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to the Jim Feist Pro Football Handicapping Show here at Dom DeMarco's Pizzeria and Wine Bar on this beautiful Christmas decorated patio. And even when it's not decorated for Christmas, it's great here on the patio. You cannot miss their happy hour from 2 to 6, 50% off all pizzas from 2 to 4, all wines half off from 2 to 6. And to back it up, they just won Best of Las Vegas outdoor patio, happy hour, chicken tenders, pizza, wings. I don't know, for like maybe the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, fifth year in a row. And bringing him in is the guy here, the award-winning handicapper, Jim Feist. I mean, we talk about it all the time. If you're not eating it down to Marco's, I got to ask you why. Well, I, I don't know that I bring him in. It's, I think it's Albert and his chef and his <laughs> service and the food. It's not me because I come here to eat too. <laughs> it's great food. It's yeah, awesome. <laughs> It, it, it's great to be here, everybody. Thanks for coming. We're going to have a good day. We're going to talk some uh, football. football. We're going to pick some winners. We are. And before we, I introduce the panel, you got to check out their holiday pop-up cocktail menu. they got cocktails and holiday beers. There's December specials. So check it out, domdemarcos.com, or just come here, 9785 West Charleston Boulevard. And joining us on the panel to Jim's right is Ray LaMarca. He's been on the panel a couple times with us. Typically is on the other side asking questions. The guy collects everything from trucks to checks when he hits bets, right? So Ray, welcome back to the show. Thank you, guys. <laughs> also welcome back a second time is one of my fellow hoop heads, veteran sportscaster with SportsX Radio, Ken Thompson. How are you, Ken? I'm doing great. I'm telling you, college basketball going crazy a little bit. Kansas coming back to earth. And, uh, yeah. The best bet I made last week wasn't even a football bet. It was Kentucky plus six and a half against Gonzaga. Down by 18 at half, most people went to bed. Kentucky comes back and wins that game in overtime. So, wish I had a little money line, but I didn't. But I'll take the, uh, the comeback anytime you have a game like that. It was in Seattle, wasn't in Spokane. I don't go against the Zags in the count. I tell you what, if you missed that game, that was one hell of a second half. And the overtime, it was a great, in college basketball, I know we're talking about NFL, but real quick, college basketball, there's no dominant team. There's a lot of bad teams. But there's no dominant team in the NCAA this year. No doubt. And if you see a lot of these big spreads right around now, you can make some money on some of these. Uh, yes, you these can. 32 and a half, <laughs> things like that. These teams are winning by 17, 18 going through the motions. That's right. Jim, let's go back here. Let me ask you a question to kick off football. And I'm curious to hear what Ray and Ken say to this. Is Jalen Hurts' inconsistency going to cost the Eagles a chance at a Super Bowl? If they can find a way to sh slow down their, uh, their running game, yes, it, it definitely would. Uh, because you, you, you got to have a multiple way of attacking, which which is why I like Detroit because of, of the way they they play the game. But Hertz is definitely there's problems there. The wide receivers want the ball, he can't get it to them for some reason, and I don't know why he fell off. But the last couple of years he has fallen off. But their running game is incredible, and it's going to be it's going to be interesting to watch them this week against Pittsburgh. Well, you, you can't find a better coach than Tomlin. I mean, I know he has, uh, gets gets big winning records every year, but he doesn't lose, and they're doing extremely well this year. Even though they have Russell Wilson, and a lot of people say he still really isn't that great, but he had that one big game against Cincinnati, who everybody has big games against Cincinnati. But he's consistent, and they're playing great defense, and they run the ball well. And it's, it's good coaching, so it's going to be a hell of a game. Ray, in the same aspect with this Eagles thing and Jalen Hurts, is the defense good enough to overcome his, his inconsistency? Yes, it is, and I'd like to uh, go a little deeper into this and what happened with Philly this past week, what's been going on. Jalen Hurts, it's obvious, has regressed. Uh, he's still a great quarterback. It's just he's not exactly who he was three years ago. If you look at his yards per game, this is what's happened to Philly. 108, 118, 179, 221. These are the yards for Jalen Hurts. The wide receivers are getting upset with him in the locker room, were getting upset with him in the locker room because they weren't eating. Now, they averaged 76 yards per game and 59, the one and two. 
that's almost impossible. That's his entire yards per game. They, ha they had to have a talk. Sirianni was not the guy. He's not real communicable. He's, he's their guy, you know, he's their coach, but they don't respect him like Andy Reid. The bottom line is this. The wide receivers are back on page. They understand that the playbook was written this year, catered, tailored a little bit more to Jalen Hurts' skill set, which has regressed a little. They're using Saquon Barkley. The reason they brought Barkley in was because of that situation. Hello? It's, it's working out. To answer your question, yeah. To beat Pittsburgh, it's sustainable. The defense is good enough. To go against Detroit right now, it's a little early to say. I think there's a lot of continuity. I think they still have great culture. I think there's great vibes. I think everyone's back on board. When it did happen, you did see that five go to five and a half. I think it's good enough for tonight. I think, like Jim said, there might be a sweet spot to scalp it. Ken, do you like this game with Pittsburgh minus five and 43? And what's your thoughts on Jalen Hurts? Actually, it's Philly minus it's five. It's Philly? Yeah. Uh, I like Jalen. Here's what I like about Jalen Hurts. First, a guy that can squat 600 pounds. I'm good with that. Second of all, why in college football or the NFL or the Philadelphia Eagles, the only team that on third and one and fourth and one can have their quarterback under center and have two big guys ready to push him? We talked about this last week. If they are going to let you get away with this crap, how are other teams not doing this? Now, I get it if you have a fragile quarterback and you don't want him to get beat up in the back, right? But can't there be a Taysom Hill type player, a fullback type player that can work on taking a snap from under center and when you need a half a yard that you push forward. You don't turn around and hand the ball off two yards back to make it a, a third or fourth and two and a half. It's absolutely unbelievable that Philadelphia is the only team that gets this. The NFL is letting you get away with rugby bullshit right now. So why is Philadelphia the only team that has mastered this? I, they call it a copycat league? Really? Show me someone else. Maybe it's because Jalen Hurts can leg press 600 pounds and nobody But Jim, I'm saying, so get somebody else. If it's not your quarterback, what do you do in freaking practice? You tell me you don't have a fullback that can learn to take the snap from under center and have two 280-pound guys push him in the back and get a freaking half a yard instead of me turning around and making it a two-and-a-half or three-yard play. I it's think, ridiculous. I, I think that there's some teams, there's not a lot of fullbacks out there, number one. Number two, not a lot of people invested in their line. And number three, I think the point of football is to avoid third and one. So, uh, but that being said, you are right. They are getting away with some rugby bullshit this year, and there should be more teams doing it. I just feel uh, there's some teams that can do it, you know, uh, Baltimore, Frisco, but after that, you're right. You're right. It's, I, I, you're right. You tell me somebody yeah, pushing right. Lamar Jackson in the back or Brock yeah. Purdy in the back. Yeah. I haven't seen it. Right. Yeah, you're not. Let me ask well, you. Maybe, maybe you should just take a lineman and, and use a lineman as a quarterback taking the shaft for that play. I am telling you, because I've gone to practices, I go to the Raider practices, I've been to Cardinal practices, I go to these practices, and half the times these guys are standing with their thumbs up their ass doing nothing. Now what is, what is a freaking punter or a kicker doing? Okay, so A.J. Cole, he's one of four maybe in the NFL that knows what the hell a coffin corner is. I'm so sick of watching guys lose 20 yards by kicking the ball in the end zone. Or I got idiots that fall for a fair catch on the seven yard line and the ball goes into the end zone all the time. You're telling me you can't sprint behind that guy, one guy, one guy stay in front of him, one guy go behind him, turn around and catch the freaking ball. How hard is it? These guys hang the ball for five seconds. You gotta be able to make those plays. Those are fundamental plays and these teams that are making millions and billions of dollars are not mastering it. Ken, I love your passion. I'm about to get light you up a little bit more here. I'm gonna go to another game. <laughs> because there's been a lot of talk about a possible Buffalo, Detroit Super Bowl. They're, they're meeting this week. I think the line's two and a half. But I'm curious, Ken, on your aspect, or on your um, thoughts here. Is Josh Allen the MVP of this league this year? He is in my book. He is in my book. And, I, and almost brought him back from the dead against the Rams. And so that's a team to keep an eye on, too, because... Buffalo's D, when you get Matt Milano back, that's your guy, right? You want that guy back. You need that guy. If you're going to win a Super Bowl, to me, you need your signal caller on D, somebody that knows where the other guy should be on defense. 100%. And uh, for me, that that's a key for Buffalo. Buffalo's the only team outside of Detroit that I played to win the Super Bowl. Those are the two teams. That's it. Got Detroit. I got them late. I got them 5-1. to one. Buffalo, I got 8.5-1. to one. So yeah. I got them late. I waited because injuries come into play. And, you know, Noah Milano was going to come back. That was key. 
But if you watch Detroit, and I do, and I watched them last week, 88 plays, Green Bay, 43 plays. How does the game come down to a last second field goal? Because that's the NFL. You turn the ball over, you make a mistake, doesn't matter. When you're missing three guys on the defensive line, you're, Hutchinson we know is gone. When you're missing Anzalone, that's a major miss. So right now, Detroit, they're playing with fire, and you think, oh, Detroit, one seed, Detroit, one seed. Really? Minnesota right on their ass. They play Minnesota. Detroit also has this game with Buffalo, and then another tough game. So Detroit's no shoo-in to get that one seed. They've got to keep on winning, because Minnesota's on their ass, and Philly's on their ass. Philly may not be winning pretty, but there's no room for error for Detroit right now. They've got to take care of business. Do you, like, do you like this game this I week? I don't like it at all. <laughs> well, you right. I hate it. I'll take the Buffalo. I hate it. <laughs> Jim, do you like this game? Well, it's, when it comes to – okay, let's start with the head coach. <laughs> all right, yeah, I, I love I, talking I, coaches. I know, let's go. I, know which, I know which head coach I like, and that's the Detroit head coach. He knows how to win. The players love him. They play, love playing for him. And he, he makes some crazy calls occasionally. But last week was kind of interesting. He knew his defense could not hold the other team. And he knew he had to win that game with his offense, which is why he made some crazy calls at the end when he didn't kick the field goal. He went for it. Goff gets stepped on, falls down. Luckily, he was able to reach the back and give him the ball. Then they got the first down. They kicked, went down to one second kick the field goal in the game. So, but on the other side, the Buffalo head coach for years has made some critical decisions in game that have been questionable. That is very likely to happen. Josh Allen is a tremendous quarterback. But, you know, Buffalo was actually one of the best teams going into the league, into the year. You thought that he was going to be, they were going to be very good. Of course, a lot of people thought the Jets were going to be better. I don't know why they thought that. but. <laughs> Now, if you talk about who's the most valuable player, this is, take a look at Tampa Bay. They're not a great team, but they've got a guy playing quarterback down there that's carrying the team. Hey, hey I'm a, Tam I'm a Tampa fan, we're in the South now. You take a bad team and you elevate him. He, is he doing a better job because he's working with so much less? This is how you, you're measuring. You're measuring the best player. Josh Allen is the better quarterback, no question. But he's also playing on a team that's loaded with talent. Let me tell, let me go here because I'm a Tampa fan, and they're leading the you're South. A Tampa fan? I have been for years. Really? Yeah. How did that happen? It's a long story. We don't have time on this show for it, but I tell it to you off the air. But I've been a Tampa fan for years, and yes. Baker has done a hell of a job this year. We're leading the South. But are we a contender for anything deep in the playoffs? No. This team is not good enough to go deep in the playoffs. And I think if you're going to be the MVP of the league, you have to be somebody that can lead your team deep into the playoffs. If, unless Baker Mayfield does that, I think it's Josh Allen. But when do, you, when do you pick the most valuable player? In the regular season or you wait for the playoffs? I always thought it was on, in the regular season. Guys, this is a humanized award. Because if it went by stats, it would go to Joe Burrow. I mean, I mean right? Well, the, yeah, I mean, the, I mean if this was a real statistical award, it would go to Burrow, okay? Uh, I understand what you're saying about Baker and stuff like that. But I'm not I'm not a fan of that. Because why? Because the guy throws for 5 billion yards? But yeah. if you throw every freaking play and you're Cam Ward, then why don't you get the Heisman? That's right? what I'm saying. I agree he shouldn't. with you. He I, shouldn't get the well, Heisman. Because that's all he does is throw. That's all he does is throw. Cam Scadaboo should get the freaking Heisman. It's an individualized award. On the show. It's like, not a team award. You're a Tampa fan. He's like Mike Allstott. Mike Allstott. Love Mike Allstott. Love Mike Allstott. Yeah. Was, was Loved sure. Mike Allstott back in the day. And you know, I know Christmas is coming up. It's holiday season. We got to get more passion on this yeah, show. We, we just have don't no, have enough, no enough energy None. on the show today. <laughs> so let me go here. Let's. It's get a humanized it. award. Like I the Heisman, agree with you. It should go to uh, like, like 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 the Heisman should go to uh, uh, Boise State, the running back. I mean, Ashton Gentry should win the Heisman. It's not, not going to do it. It's a humanized award. So Travis Hunter is going to get it from Colorado, but Ashton Gentry should get exactly. it. Exactly. That's Same another. With the MVP that's another award. popularity right. contest. But let's talk about a popular team in the Kansas City Chiefs going for a three p. Uh -huh. Did them beating the Chargers show us anything more than what we didn't already know? It, about it showed. It showed me that they're not them. They're not very good. That offensive line is pathetic. Mahomes is getting killed. They got a left tackle they brought back last week. He got hurt again. I mean, they brought Pacheco back, which helps their running game. But 
the Kansas City Chiefs, unless they're sleepwalking through these early games, no way. I mean, they're 12 and one with a plus 56 points for the year. You know, How can you do that? Here's the thing on the line: the line opened at five and a half. Last time I looked, it was down to four. It is again at Cleveland this week. Well, Cleveland's last night they got two inches of snow. It's cold as hell. It's about 10 degrees. The wind is blowing, but this is Thursday. What will it be like on Sunday? We don't know that. But it can get pretty nasty there. It, well, we know that. We've seen it already. I'm from Cleveland. Uh, I'm well, sorry. Yeah, you are. I know. It's good time to be drunk. <laughs> we'll take up a collection for you. <laughs> Everybody, please put 50 cents in the containers. I love it. It's from Ashton Ashton Buell. What's uh, Urban? Uh, what's from there? Uh, was Urban from there? Yeah, Urban was from Ashton Buell. Uh, but listen, I want to say this real quick. I, I, I got a heavy one, guys, and I'm going to tell you right now. I, I did it. I don't care. I'll let the world know. I got a two-team money line parlay in Kansas City and Philadelphia to sweep the leg. As uh, they said, Kansas my City and yeah, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to justify this in my head before I lose. Because um, <laughs> that's what Cleveland does. Let me tell you something about Cleveland. They beat Super Bowl champions the next year. They're, they're, they're amazing. They, they beat teams they, they shouldn't beat and they lose. And they beat the guys from Cleveland that bet against them. Yeah, they do. And that's what's going to happen this week. But the only reason I'm doing it is this. Kansas City uh, is smart enough to look ahead, but not look ahead. Makes sense? They know that they have to win now because their remaining schedule, it's not fancy. It's Houston, Pittsburgh, and Denver. You could lose all three games. They could lose all three games. And here's the thing. Very, very. Ray, let, me, Ray, let me tell you this. What Kansas City has shown to date is it doesn't make a difference who they play. It doesn't seem like they have enough, I don't know, fire in their belly to play. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't seem like they want to put anybody away. Even the bad teams, they don't want they to put away. And if, put they don't get a, if they don't get a healthy... Harrison Butker back. Yeah, you're not going to keep getting the luck of hitting the inside of the post and getting to carry him through. I mean, they have. I mean, there's seven or eight games, and it started from the opening game against Baltimore that they have come through. And again, we remember Muhammad Ali right back in the day. He had to knock out the champ. Right, and there's four fights, uh, probably three fights to Norton. You know, and he probably lost them all. Right, and he, unless Norton breaks his jaw in Wide World of Sports, he doesn't get that one. Right, but I mean. Because Ali was the champ. Till you beat the champ, he's still the champ. With Kansas City, they're the champs. Till you beat them, they're still the champs. They he's abso he's absolutely right. You know, look at the, what was this record they hold, Jim? Uh, uh, the most consecutive victories in the history of the NFL by one score or less. Oh, yeah. It's unbelievable. But you know who did not, that? The Patriots. Close. Remember the Patriots did that for 17 years, and everybody from Philly and New York just kept fading them every single year. And then you look back after 20 years, thinking, "What was I thinking?" <laughs> That's what's happening right now. So you think they go into Super Bowl? Speaking no, of the I, they could. I don't speaking think they Speaking of the Patriots, I, I don't want to change subjects here, but we're sticking in football. How about the news that Belichick and Michael Lombardi are moving to UNC? They're going from the pros. Well, Michael was in the pros as well. And now he's the GM. And Bill Belichick's the coach. Uh, I think he just said, hey, NFL, we don't need you. We're moving on. No, I said it was so easy to cheat in the NFL. What did you see me in college? <laughs> <laughs> he wanted a bigger platform. Oh, yeah. he, wanted, he wanted a better platform to cheat on. <clears throat> so do you you like Philly, Kansas City, two-team mar money line? Do, I you like, do you like the spread at, at Cleveland? No, I don't like the spread. If I, if I do. I'm just not going to do it. I just see cold weather. I know what's going to happen. I think that they're going to keep the ball away from Jameis, not that they need to. I just think that it, they know that they really need to win this game if they want to. Look at the schedule, guys. I mean, this is the most – it's it's horrendous. They're going to lose to Denver probably. Pittsburgh is not a given. I mean, no. Houston, this, this could be 0-3. They have to get back past Cleveland. I know, you know, they have to, have to. We've all heard that, but – this is a key game for Kansas. Ken, do you like this game? No. Nobody yes, likes this no, game. No one likes it. But There's a lot of games this week that have playoff implications. Oh, you're, you're, attached you're, to you're, you're talking Casey the, Cleveland? Yeah. If I were going to play it, I would take the Browns. I, it's just to me, Jameis Winston gives them a chance to win. I know he gives them a chance to lose, right? Because it's <laughs> – I, I get it. And, and even that, that game against Denver, just that last interception, I was just like – you didn't see that linebacker? He's like two feet away from you. That's it. Kind of blows your mind. Well, James, but, James makes this. He, okay. he's, he doesn't okay. discriminate. Yeah. He plays for both teams. No. But, <laughs> but but he also brought some spark to that team. Deshaun Watson was a major bust. Barry, the GM, should have been fired. Barry, the Barry made that move with the guaranteed money. Haslam's guaranteed money. That's Barry. But he has not taken any responsibility for that at all. He said he vetted the Deshaun Watson thing. He didn't vet anything, okay? And that's why 
Deshaun Watson's reaping karma that he deserves. So Jameis Winston, to me, really put some spark in this team. And going into next year, I'm looking at Jameis Winston. Yes, you have to work with him to cut down on interceptions. But at the end of the day, the kid shows that he can put up points. And that's what Cleveland needs. Cleveland needs points. Why? Because their defense is always darn good. So the players love him. The fans love him. He's, you know, he, what did he do in Tampa when he was down there? When he had 30-some touchdowns, 30-some interceptions? I think, I'm sure he leads the league in pick sixes. I mean, that's a, that's a given. But he is exciting. In any case, this game, I think it opened higher than it was, I think it was six when it opened. It and I, I like the dog at four, but I can't really trust Cleveland because of the turnovers and all that. But I can't trust Kansas City either. So is it a first half under? Oh, God, I don't know. With Jameis, you never know. I mean, geez, you know. <laughs> I, I will tell you this. Ray, Ray loves Philadelphia. He's got a money line part. I think Pittsburgh wins the game straight up. That's that's my my feeling. I think I like the coach better. I, I they're, they're playing they're playing hard. Uh, they, their defense plays hard. Russell Wilson is not the Russell Wilson of four years ago, but he is good enough. And he's managing the game. He's not turning the game over. And when you talk talk about the kicking game, the running game, and the defense, Pittsburgh has all that. This is the type of team that can go across state and and beat this beat Philadelphia straight up. James uh, Russell Wilson is no worse than Hurts. Well, I just Tommy, I got to just dump this in because my daughter Kiara just showed up and her <laughs> her mom's side of the family they're all Cleveland. <laughs> all right, so she has gone through that half of her life with her brother and the family yeah. and these Browns parties and all this disappointment and it's like it's in her blood I mean, oh. she can't get away from it, it the yeah. poor kid the, the but, dog pound. but she but she still she still roots but she's a realist but she still roots <laughs> and then figuring here's the greatest real quick story with Kiara so I took her to USC football ever since she's a little girl and she'd always go my buddy has third row seats so we'd go to these SC games and Kiara since she's four a few years back, they opened up against UNLV. So I played UNLV. I think they were plus 25 and a half, somewhere like that. I go, SC's going to win, but they're not going to win by that. They always kind of take it easy in the second half of an opener. I said, I'll take UNLV. So I had a pretty good number on uh, UNLV. So Kiara and I get to the Coliseum. We get down there. Some with all my USC friends that have been there. These are you know, well-to-do guys, attorneys, this and that. And, uh, you know, they love Kiara. They've watched her grow up. And so UNLV's hanging in the game, but they're hanging a little too close. And I'm just like, you know, I'm telling you, UNLV's hanging. Now, USC better get a couple scores here. I'll never forget, Lexington Thomas for U, uh, UNLV busts into the clear a little bit. And I'm looking at USC secondary, and I'm like, they're not going to catch this guy. And all of a sudden, out of Noah, it's going to bring UNLV within two points in the second half. And all of a sudden, Kiara stands up, and she's like, Go! Go! <laughs> and also in the, in the middle of it, she realizes she's grown up with all these Daddy's USC buddies and all this stuff, and she realizes Daddy gets free tickets from these USC guys. <laughs> and she looks down at me and she goes, Oh, Dad, I still love USC football. But I'm a Vegas girl, and I feel compelled to root for the Rebels at this point. And I loved it, and I said, You know what? Good for you. That's what you have to do. My dad was an Ohio State guy because he lived in Columbus for 10 years. And when they beat Michigan's ass, I was in a Jersey barber shop in Nutley, New Jersey. It was OJ's senior year, and uh, Ohio State kicked the crap out of him. And my dad's gloating around the barber shop, and all, and all the guys there were either Notre Dame or Penn State fans, because Rutgers wasn't relevant. And there I am. They put Junior in the booster seat. All I see is this guy with a white horse and a sword. These gorgeous women in sweaters. The fire on his cup. Well, that's my freaking team. And I've been a USC fan for 57 years now. And Kiara's gotten to vote. So I was so happy that I went away from my dad in his Ohio State. And my daughter went away from me in USC to back the Rebels. So that was kind of cool. I, I didn't mean to take up the whole thing. That's okay. Let, let me, let's get into a couple games that have big playoff implications this weekend. We, you hit on Baker Mayfield and my Tampa Bay Buccaneers that are going to go play at the Chargers. Well, let me talk about that a little bit. Go ahead. You know the because uh, do you like this Her game? Herbert is a little bit hurt. Yep. He's been held out of practice a little bit. He's got a couple of injuries. There's always a question mark when you get a situation like this of whether the coach wants to risk him or not. I don't know if he's going to play or not. I can't say he won't or I can't say he will. Uh, but if he does play, he may not be 100%. So this could be a, when you're looking at three even and you're not, you're, the, the dog is favored. 
yeah. with that number. There's a line of three, but the dog is favored on that money-wise. So you're looking at some money leaning to Tampa. Do you like the game or no? I do. Okay, which way? Tampa. The dog? What about you, Ray? Chargers. He's just going to say the opposite. I'm not going to say the opposite. I, I, I like. I, I don't like the over under. I don't like where it's at. But I, I do like that. I like that three. I think it's going to be a close one. I like the Chargers. Uh, for me, as a Tampa fan, they've never done well when they have to travel to the other coast. Right. Exactly. So this never. game scares me. I don't know how they're going to they're going to do in this game, but. In history, Tampa doesn't do well when they come to the West Coast. Ken, what are your thoughts? Uh, you know, with Harbaugh, he knows he's got to win this game. And if, if the Chargers are going to be a factor in the playoffs, and they only have eight wins now, so they're not even in the playoffs, but if they're going to be a factor, they have to win this game. That dropping that KC game the way they did, this to me is a must win for the Chargers. And I know Tampa Bay is right there, you know, in the NFC South, and they're nip and tuck with, you know, Atlanta, a game ahead of Atlanta, yep. and they can now afford to lose as well. They want to keep that lead. But this is a game the Chargers have to win. I know they're banged up, but I think Harbaugh finds a way to gut this one out. Well, Cousins, Cousins, played, has, sorry, Cousins has a dead arm, and then if, if he still keeps playing and he can't throw the ball, the Raiders actually might beat them this week. So that would really help Tampa, even if they do lose this game on Sunday. Jim, let me start back with you with another big game that has huge implications, and that's Seattle playing Green Bay. I mean, this, this game, both teams need this game. Last time I looked, I think it was five. I think the line has changed since then. Um, Seahawks are now leading the West. Does anybody here on the panel like this game at all? Well, I'll jump in since nobody else said anything so far. I don't know why, honestly, I do not know why Green Bay opened this game as a favorite. I, did, when I, when it, I thought it was a, a misprint when I looked at it you know, on the screen. Why are they favored? I don't get it. I mean, Seattle's playing very well. They're, they got a coach. Their, their defense is playing well. They're, they're better coached now than they were a couple of years ago. And Geno's playing solid ball. This I don't I don't get why Green Bay's favored in Seattle. They're both about the same teams. You're taking away the home field advantage from Seattle, and they do have a home field advantage. Mm -hmm. It's a tough place to play. It's probably going to be raining. It's very possible to have wind. You never know there because the weather changes there every 15 minutes. So I, I favor Seattle. I don't think they should be the dog. I think they should at least be one or two point favorites. A lot of things change in Seattle like every 30 seconds, not Is just right? the weather. You, you have more stories? Off air. 78% <laughs> chance of rain. When they, yeah. when they list something 78% chance of rain, I know it's not till Monday, pretty good chance it's going to rain there. That's such an advantage for Seattle, although yep. Green Bay has played in some weather conditions and it's not been, with this global warming, it's not been as, uh, you know, you're not seeing the snow that you see as much. You see in some of this misty rain. My thing is always wind. Looking for wind, if it's not going to affect major advantage on the total for the over, right? We look that way. As long as there's not wind going sideways in somebody's face, they can because it is advantage at, for the receivers. I see it's at two and a half now. Do either one of you like this game? I, I, was, I got a lot of respect for Seattle because I went against them last week. I had Arizona, was going to the game, and uh, ended up passing on going. I'm glad I did because I would have been disappointed. That was my biggest bet last week was Atlanta. I mean, was uh, Arizona. And I really thought they'd get revenge for losing the game in Seattle. It was a game that they needed. Kyler Murray comes right down the field, 7 nothing. I'm going, okay, this is good. And i got to give Geno Smith and that defense a lot of credit. I mean, Geno Smith, uh, he's thrown it to the right team. Uh, even when the running backs are, are banged up, they get another guy. Charbonnet came in and, and was masterful. And uh, now with Metcalf healthy, I mean, you're not even hearing Lockett's name anymore, but you got Smith and Jigba, and, uh, and Seattle, to me, is a dangerous team in the, in the NFC as a, as a whole. There's no pressure on that. And there's a team that they haven't been talked about a lot in, like, playoff implications. Ray, you like Yeah, that's game? what I'm saying. There's no yeah. pressure on them, right, Ray? Yeah, I do. I like Seattle. I think uh, there, there are some key players. Green Bay, I give them a lot of credit for what they've done all year to go on the road in this weather, blah, blah, blah. I'm taking the candy. I'm taking Seattle, and I'm also taking the first half under. All right. You heard it first. Yeah. Right from the guy who collects a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about tonight's game, Rams and the 49ers. Rams are in the wild card hunt. I think from the last time I looked, weather could be an issue in this game. It's raining. It's raining. It's raining. Do you like tonight's game at all, Jim? It's a, yeah. a very, very difficult game to handicap. The problem is, it's till two and a half. The, yes. The, the 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 situation with the left tackle for for uh, San Francisco, 40, uh, the Niners, is dire. I mean, when you lose a left tackle, 
and just like Kansas City is having a problem with their left tackle. And it, it, it kills the quarterback. You're going to have to – and they got other injuries. you got Bosa's that are banged up. You knew, no, CMC's out. Right now, you know, the Rams played a much more difficult game last week against Buffalo where the Niners had a cakewalk against the Bears. I don't know what the Bears never got off the bus, but – this is a very difficult game to handicap when you have that many players out. And it's the same thing when you, you know, with any team that loses key players like that. So when you're looking at a game and you can take three with a dog that's healthier, that has had a good record against these teams, both coaches know each other well, it's a division game, and, and you have these questions at very key positions, you almost have to, you're almost forced to take the dog plus the three. Ray, let me guess, you're in the under on this one. Well, I just moved to two, and I am on the under. <laughs> I figured you were. I'm on the under. And like, Ray, no, you know, you're taking yeah, the under. Taking Injuries, the under. you're taking the I'm under. taking the under. I'm running with it. <laughs> and I'm taking the two and a half. I'm going to give up the two and a half. Half a point. I just think, I'm sorry, whatever. Cute story, Rams, whatever. You know, I'm taking Kyle Shanahan at home. I don't care how beat up they are. They're going to slow the game down. They're going to control the game. They're going to run the ball. They're going to try to, they're going to, try to get out there with a win. If they want to try, it's going to have to go on here. So I'm going to separate them. Give up the two and a half, take the under 40. Okay. Dorindos, why not, why not, if, you like, if you like the favorite, why play the two and a half if you think it's going to go under? Why are you not, not play the money line? I don't, I don't understand that. The money line? Because you're a money line I'm gonna, player. I'm, I'm going to give up the two and a half. I'll give why would you do that? Minus 108. You, what? Minus two and a half, minus 108. Why, why not play the money line? Money line would be minus 108. 40. Okay, so you, you think it's going to be a lower scoring game, 1400 to which win brings it. which brings the point spread more into it. Why not lay the money line? Because you are a money line player. Oh, I, I'm getting Always. more money by giving up the two and a half. I understand. As my buddy Chuck Edel says, <laughs> you don't pay the juice if you win the bet. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you like this game that I okay? Yeah. It, it's a, it's a tough game because San Francisco no San Francisco dominated last week and it was an easy game for them so they come off an easy game the Rams thought they had Buffalo uh, down 16 and all of a sudden it's down to two you know whatever it's a one score game and they're fortunate that there wasn't another three minutes left in that game but I got respect for Cup and Nakua I would play the Rams all day and twice on Sunday if it's inside on turf because then they're they're similar to that old fastest team on turf type, type stuff, and Nakua doesn't drop anything. That guy, and what he does that I like about Nakua more than any other receiver, is when he lays out and dives for a ball, you don't see any of this one-hand shit. Two hands. That's why he makes these catches. Everybody wants to be Odell Beckham. You don't all have hands that are size of my feet. Are you kidding me? So you gotta, you got, you got I mean, and those happen. I, I watch how many times, college and pro, that these guys drop a pass where they got the one hand on it, and a good portion of that one hand, that if they used that other freaking hand, they could have made the catch. But they want to be on the highlight film, they want to be on ESPN, top 10, and you missed a pass that you probably should have had. That's old school stuff, but we're old school people, most of us. So we go back to fundamentals, and I see a lack of it big time. Nakua is a guy that I think will be probably the top two or three in the top two or three receivers for a long time to come because he knows how to do it right. He could cut across the middle too, which is hard to do for a receiver. These guys the prima donnas don't want to cut across the middle. I mean, you never saw like Randy Moss cut across the middle. That, right that said, I don't like this game because I, I, San Francisco needs it like blood, but they're banged up. They're getting cluster injuries in the backfield. Talked about McCaffrey and Mason both out and Garendo's banged up. But keep an eye on Kyle Juszczyk. They have a fullback that's not built like a fullback yeah. that has great hands and pretty good speed. He could be the difference in this game. Ken, let me ask you something on the game on coming up Sunday. And we've talked on this show week after week about double-digit dogs. But Baltimore is going to the Giants. It opened at 14 and a half. Now it's up to 16. I mean, does this make sense to you? I grew up about 35 miles from Giants Stadium. Back in the good old days. Phil uh, Sims days. Well, yeah, 22 or 25 against the Broncos. Yeah, <laughs> and, then, and then just when you thought they were down and out, old Hostetler pulled that cape off and got us another Super Bowl back in 91. So, uh, but yeah, when it gets up to that NFL, you respect because you could be up 21 and get back to work. And those drive you nuts. Anytime you now you're up over two touchdowns. As you realize, this is in college football. This is NFL. Giants are at home. They still got to sell tickets. Do they want that number one overall pick? Okay, Tommy DeVito doesn't. 
So he's getting the start in this game, right? Because Locke can't go. So he wants to go out there and deliver. They don't have much of a team. Baltimore should win the game. But Baltimore's not going to show all their cards. They get up 17. They're coasting. They're good. They can win this game by 10. It, it, could, it could go from 10 to 20. So I didn't touch the game. But I, I'm not going to lay that amount of points in the uh, end. Jim, why don't you money line it? <laughs> Jim can. <laughs> Why don't you money? <laughs> Why don't you so, money line it? Jim? You I, talk, want you, I want you to give me one of the defenders. What do you you <laughs> talked about this week after week about double-digit dogs. Is 16 a number you would take? Well, here's the problem. Let's you know when you're handicapping any sport, you should look behind who they played last week and who they're playing next week. Guess who Baltimore plays next week? How about, a, how about a team called Pittsburgh? Okay, big game. That's a huge game okay. next week. You think they might? Is that Pittsburgh? Do you think they might yeah. hold up on this thing? Or do you get ahead 21, 24, and say, hey, you know, we're not gonna we're not gonna go out there well, and the, kill our players? As Ken said, they're not gonna show their cards for sure. Okay. Well, when you, you, but when you have Derrick Henry, you, take, you, Henry though, you should be able to work the clock, right? Right. Are you, are you gonna, gonna take sixteen? I took seventeen. Okay. You it, took did 17. Touch, <laughs> it did touch seventeen. Yeah. When I, I'm not gonna I, you know, I'm not gonna make a case for the Giants. They stink. You know, and you know they're 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 actually tanking. They tanked a couple of weeks ago. They're still tanking, but it's about Baltimore. How many do they want to win by? Do they want to win by 45? They could if they wanted to. Does so Lamar even come out do. second half? Pardon me. Does Lamar even come out in the second? If half? I'm the coach, he does. He doesn't come out on the field. He comes on the bench. I got you. Yeah, 17 always looks good, 16, 17, until it's 14 to 3 in the middle of the second quarter. And you go, God Ray, damn. are you going to take 17? I'm not going to touch that game. I, no. Anything over 14, I'm taking. Okay. All right. All right, I want to go back to a team we've hit on a couple times, and that's the Steelers. This, they're, Everybody's talked from the day one. Their schedule's brutal. It's horrendous. Are they going to be able to withstand it? And they just keep seeming to be knocking naysayers down left and right and proving that this team can handle this schedule. This team wants to make a, a stand. You talked already about Tomlin. Is the Steelers someone that a team like for Ray likes to throw a little bit of sprinkle here and there on a team that might just make the Super Bowl? What are you asking? Can the Steelers make the Super Bowl? Absolutely. They have, they have the coach. They got the defense. They got a kicking game. They've got a quarterback that's been to a couple Super Bowls. Probably should have won the one that they gave up with that crazy call. But and he's not that player anymore, but he's still pretty good. And normally they can run the ball pretty well. So it is definitely get rid of that call. We don't need that. <laughs> especially, Somebody, especially when it comes I, to I didn't know those one nine hundred numbers could call you back. <laughs> Well, it said scam call, so I it's hung up with probably... <laughs> it's a very good time. Jim's, Jim's like, scam call? Wait, I'm not dialing. <laughs> Ray, and, Ray and Ken, do you guys, I mean, do the Steelers have enough to get to the Super Bowl? No. <laughs> I, think no, they, I, mean, no. I think they do. I mean, and, and here's why. Exactly what Jim's saying. When you have a good, solid coach, when you have a guy that takes 100 sacks, right, and people look at Russell Wilson, God, he's not the guy you can't get away from. But you know what? He doesn't throw those same interceptions that Jameis Winston throws, right? Jameis Winston doesn't take a sack because he's trying to make sure he gets rid of the ball. And sometimes those turn into interceptions. So as much scrutiny as Tomlin got when he took Justin Fields out and put in Russell Wilson, especially that first half when Russell Wilson is dying, the Steeler fans are going, what are you doing? Especially the analytical kids are like, are you freaking nuts? Who is this old man? We don't need to. No, Russell Wilson has the experience. Tomlin has the experience. You give me T.J. Watt. You give me that running game with Najee Harris and Warren. You can win. And you got a tight end in Fryermuth that can flat out catch anything. Pittsburgh always good in the trenches. Yes, they can shorten games and they can win any style anywhere. I I, I agree with you because the kicking game they can shorten Boswell, the game. Boswell's having his best year too. And Ray, you say no, but I, is it is it Pittsburgh and Buffalo? He just says I'm no not, because he's going against me. That's, I'm all not, that's not true. Is, are you, is, it, is it Pittsburgh and Buffalo for you? Buffalo. Or is Balt, is, do you have Baltimore ahead of Pittsburgh? Baltimore. Listen, Pittsburgh is a great team. I don't know why everyone is, is, is amazed by how well Pittsburgh is doing this year. Pittsburgh is doing what a football team is supposed to do. 
you, you build a line. Right. You have a great coach. You run the ball. You spread it out. You play wonderful defense. I mean, they're they're doing a three four. They're they're doing what you're supposed to do in the AFC North and play uh, build a wonderful football team, which they've done for 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 50, 60 years. Okay, three four head coaches in 50 years, four or five starting quarterbacks in the past 30, 40 years. They're doing great. I think we're. It's not their year. In order for you to so win, you a, the third in order best you team, win a Super Bowl, you need an X factor. I'm sorry. You think they're the third best team in the AFC? And you don't think TJ Watt's an X factor? I do. You don't I think do. Boswell's think a factor? I do. I just don't but think really TJ Watt's no, Tom Tomlin's a factor. You can be TJ Watt, and I'm happy. I'll start my defense. And I understand where you're that going guy. with like the, the whole effect of like Trent Dilfer, Baltimore defense, build it up, AFC North, that type of run, they could do it. Not this year. It's not that type of team. Maybe next year. I like the future of Pittsburgh. I like the way they're going. I like their key positions and their players. That's just, I just don't think they have it enough this year to win the Super Bowl. I like them this year. The, the, the can they, you don't is, think they can get there, though. No, it, well, here, here's why I like them this year is because you're surprising the league because you people didn't know if Justin Fields was even going to be on the team this time. They, they didn't know if Russell Wilson was going to. I mean, now you got a tandem. Look, neither guy is great, but they each have strengths that the other doesn't have. So Justin Fields can be that guy that comes in and makes a big play when you need a, a run out the, around the outside, take care of the football. And I think Justin Fields learned that in his first few games starting for Pittsburgh, knowing I can't turn this ball over with regularity like I did in Chicago. So otherwise I'm in Tomlin's doghouse and I'm never going to on the field. So because he took care of the football, he does get back in, even though Russell Wilson has that experience. He's in the twilight of his career, but he wants to win another Super Bowl. And I'm telling you, you bet against Tomlin, you're going to lose. Any questions from the audience? Anybody got any questions you want to ask the panel? I know we're going to give away some bottles of J-Lore wine after we get done with the show, but no questions at all this time? No that's because Ray's up here. Yeah, well, that's true. Ray is on this side of the panel, so we don't have any questions on that side today. Anything at all? we got a quiet group. Well, the passion's all up here. Yeah, that's we're, true. We're, we're eating that great Don DeMarco's food over there. Yeah, yeah that's true. Everybody's too busy. Food. We, we, let's talk about some other teams. Okay, what's the other games? Let's, let's talk about Dallas and, and Carolina. Oh. Now, you know, every, everybody wrote off Young, the, the quarterback for Carolina. The team's playing pretty good. I like the way they're, they're going out there with a lot of passion. How about Dallas? They block a punt, give the ball to the other team, they lose the game. I mean, I feel sorry for the people that had Dallas plus the points because that was a big, that was a tough loss. It wasn't me. I wasn't on that. I mean, I, I will say this with uh, Bryce Young. So I saw him play high school ball over at Modern Day and then go to Bama. And, and I always thought, God, man, the kid needs to put on some weight. Similar to what I thought with Jane Daniels when he was at Arizona State. And then he bulked him up a little bit, uh, especially lower body when he went to LSU. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, this Carolina team, to me, they're showing some heart. And how about the guy they that bet, how about the guy that bets three point one million to win four hundred forty two thousand? And if that guy Xavier Leggett doesn't drop that freaking ball at the end, they beat the Eagles, and that guy drops three point one million trying to make four hundred forty two thousand. I'd feel sorry for him, but anybody can drop three point one million dollars on a bet. He probably has more money than he even knows. He's That's probably right. a collector. If there was a guy that <laughs> That's a Jim Feist bet right there. That's a Jim Feist bet. Collector of defenders. There's probably a guy there is a guy that, that took seven hundred and fifty thousand an hour later. I saw that. Yeah? Yeah, so he, he was a collector too. A collector too, probably. <laughs> what I, I like Carolina in this game, by the way. I don't okay. know why. Uh, what other well, games do you like, Jim? Well, I mean we do have there's a lot of I mean, there's, we're looking at teams that are looking the next yeah. year, a lot yeah. of that. And that's, that makes it difficult. But uh, we talked about the Baltimore Giants, Cincinnati. What are they going to do about this defense? What? Okay. Tell Nothing me, somebody, this year. Somebody tell me They're what happened to the, uh, what, Lou Anarumo? Is that the defender, the defensive hit, the coach for, uh, for the Bengals? Yeah. What the hell happened to this defense? They got the best offense in football with, with, I mean, Chase and Higgins and, so, I, I mean, what, and, and Burrow, of course, unbelievable head, quarterback. What happened to this defense? Here's what's going to happen in the offseason. He's probably going to be the first one to go. They'll get a new defensive coordinator in there as soon as the season's over. Because oh. obviously it's not working. Oh, Trey, right. Hendrick, Trey Hendrickson's getting tired. I mean, the guy's a yeah. one-man bad. Yep. Yeah. You're right about that. They're calling for the head coach in Cincinnati. I don't know. I know he's tight with Burrow, Zach Taylor, but I, I don't know. There. What other games you like? Any of them? Well, it, there's, it's it's really all, all about conversation. I mean, what, you could you could talk about New Orleans. What are they going to do without Carr? And who's going to play? And, and you got a, you got Washington going in there at a seven and a half point favorite. Does this team deserve to be seven and a hook? 
You don't know. Anybody? I don't think you know what commando team is going to show up. I don't think you know what you know the, the rookie is going to do either. I mean, they've done a good job building this team. They got a good coach. They got they're doing good things there. But the rookie is he's tailed off a little bit. Mm -hmm. And rookies do that because they're coming in out of college. They don't play this many tough games in college. They don't Jimmy, get hit Jimmy, like I think they do he was. I think Jaden Daniels was hurt. I think Jaden Daniels he is hurt. You saw you yeah. saw the you saw the early part right the oblique. And you saw the early run that he had. They're coming off a bye. That gives him another week to get better. And I like the game he played right before the bye. I think Washington's live, but now it's seven and a half, right? Oh, it's right. kind of that hook. I don't like. I don't like the you hook. You, you had to get it at seven touches. or yeah. less, right? Yeah. I mean, if it was six, I think we'd probably get a little lit up on this. But six, seven and a half, you got to, got to yeah, make no, that, yeah. score. That hook is big. Miami and Houston. If it, if you look at the stats for Miami, they don't look all that good. But you got to take out the games that Tua didn't play, and when you start yeah. looking at it that way, in the games he played, uh, they don't look all that bad. And you've had regression at Houston. They lost the they lost the uh, the wide receiver. They had the other wide receiver out for a few games, and their quarterback is is they definitely not played well. They're they're not covering spreads at home. And you got Miami going, and they both need the you know Houston doesn't really need the game. They're going to win that division. Unless Indianapolis can go up to Denver and, and win that game straight up, which most people don't think they can. So, I mean, Miami is really in more desperate need to win this and get in the playoffs, where Houston looks like they might have a cakewalk into the playoffs. It, it, you know, but it is three, and they're a little bit more juice on the favorite. I, if, if Miami wins, and yeah. say San Francisco does beat the Rams tonight, they play each other next week in Miami, and then Miami closes at Cleveland at the Jets, so yeah, they get they have a chance, but Houston, another team coming off a bye, and that is big. I mean, I, I get it's not Andy Reid coming off a bye, but it's still coming off a bye, a team getting healthy, a team realizing, okay, we're in good shape in the AFC South. We're in the weakest, you know, division there. We we should be able to hold off Indianapolis. Got a two game lead. Just got to split our last four games. But I don't think D'Amico Ryan's goes in with that mentality. He says, well, you know what? We got Miami, then we're at Kansas City, then we got Baltimore at home, and we close at Tennessee. You know, so there's one game on there that you could say they should win at Tennessee, right? Should be hands down. But they're hoping they don't need that game at that time so they can rest their players, right? So right. this becomes a really big game for Houston. Off the bye, I like Houston. You talked about Miami being desperate. They were desperate last week. How fortunate were they for those that had Miami and maybe had them even in a teaser? Well, they, they're lucky because they, they, they ended up winning up by against, six. They went up against Aaron Rodgers in that game who happened to find the yes. fountain of youth for one game and played a good game because he hasn't looked all that good. Last week he looked good. Now, was that the defense for Miami that gave up, gave that up, or was Aaron just coming back to who he was for a day? It's also for, for guys that have played sports. When there's no pressure on you, when it doesn't matter if you win or lose, you're able to do what you want, right? Jets all of a sudden are out of it. If the Jets were neck and neck with Miami, that game meant everything. Then you find out, yeah. right? Well, Jets and Jacksonville, I mean, I don't know who's paying attention to that game this weekend besides the people that are Jets and Jacksonville fans. Unless, are, Ray, are you betting the game? No, I'm definitely not betting. And I like Houston, though, coming off the bye. I, you do? I, I like Houston coming off the bye, yeah. All right. Any last games, Jim, or? Well, uh, I will say that I think the Jets will win. Do you? Yes, I do. Why? Because, because of the game they, like you said, uh, Jim Fye said, look, they, they played a good game. Rodgers played a good game. He still wants to win a game, and he wants to win a game with Devontae oh, Adams right. to see if there is any flicker of future for those two to come back to Jersey next year. And I say Jersey because MetLife's in Jersey. Yeah. But, uh, and I'm from Jersey, so I had to sneak that in. <laughs> the Garden <laughs> State takes enough bad bad can, press, so I got to sneak that in. Can, go ahead. Ken, you opened up a, a, earlier and talked a little bit about college basketball. I know you're were a very, very good basketball player. And uh, we haven't talked in, at all about basketball, college or pro, on this panel. And we're going to have to start doing that because let me know when you want to talk college. I'm in. Okay, well, why don't, you, why don't you, you and Ken lead that off? Because you know a lot about college, and I know Ken does as well. I mean, we talked about it earlier. There's, there's no dominant team as we've seen in the past. There's a lot of parity at the top. You're going to see, a, I think you're going to see a, a crazy March Madness starting in week two. I don't know how much we're going to see a lot of upsets in week one because the bad is bad. The bottom of the NCAA is bad because all the good players are getting poached to these better, better teams by the NIL. And I can, what I've seen so far is 
you, you got to get away from the media. The media's been hyping up Kansas and Kansas and Kansas, and they go on the road and lose two, the two non-ranked teams, and they weren't that close in either right. game. Yep. They made runs in the second half to make those scores respectable. They were down over 20 in both those games. I don't know how good Kansas is. I don't know how good some of these top teams are. What I do know is from what I've seen and some of the teams I've watched, and the, the, the two things I can tell you is this. San Diego State defends the living hell out of you. They got a bunch of junkyard dogs that look like a bunch of old guys that are linemen that get up into your face and they disrupt you and they're keeping the scores down. You got to watch San Diego State, depending on who they play. They, if they can't really score, they've always been their problem. No, I'm, they, friends, I'm friends with Dutch as a coach. And, yeah, uh, Dutch is a great guy. Yeah, I got, they actually, can, they I got a classic. Hell how I got his cell number was uh, at, the, uh, at the media days. And I, 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 Mark Few came by and Dutch came by. And they were the only, I mean, as God would have it, we're the only three there. And I go, hey, let me get a picture. Got the picture of Brian Dutch or Mark Few together. And then Dutch is like, hey, can you send that to me? I go, yeah, give me your cell. Send it over to you. So I got his cell and Mark Few's cell. So, you know, every now and then you got to kind of work your way in. But as a broadcaster, you know, I've got a, a, a lot of those guys for, for a long time. But Brian Dutch are a lot of respect. And I had a lot of respect for Steve Fisher, who was always criticized oh, yeah. as an X-Nose yep. guy. And I go, these people don't know college best because Steve Fisher knows the game. And he, that's why he built San Diego State to what they are and then handed the baton to Dutcher, who's a hell of a coach as well. And San Diego State lost some offensive prowess Big this time. year, and that's why they got out to a lousy start. Yep. They couldn't score. But that team in the Vieja Center is one of the best home court advantages out there. Yes, it is. And, and I'm the, keep an eye. Yeah, I agree with you. Keep an eye on San Diego State. They're, they're dangerous for sure. And uh, in the let me, Mountain West. I let me throw a team at you, Ken, because there's a team, another team that I, I really like, and they're not clicking on all cylinders yet, and they're already dangerous, and that's Iowa State. T.J. Alzelberger mm -hmm. should write the book on how to get proper transfers because ever since he's left UNLV and went to Iowa State, he has found the recipe to get the right guys for the right transfers. He makes deep runs. You give me a point guard like Lipsy, and I'm good. And the way he makes them defend, he makes them defend at a world-class level for 40 minutes, and if you don't defend, he'll take you out and sacrifice offense for defense. And they're playing my boys tonight because I am good friends with Fran McCaffrey in Iowa. It'll be a hell of a game. Yeah, they're in Iowa City tonight, and then, uh, the boys are favored in, uh, from Ames by five and a half, I think. Yep. And, and, and Iowa's, they're hurting. They got a, they got a miracle uh, three-point shot to win a game last week that I think they blew a 15-point lead. Uh, the kid... Uh, Dicks or whatever hit that uh, game, like a 30-footer, right? a beautiful shot. But Fran doesn't have that same squad this year. Mm -hmm. He's got uh, a couple three-point shooters, but it's not the same Iowa squad that we've seen with the big guy down low. The other, only other team I'll throw up at you that you can take a look at, it's surprising me that the co Golden is still the coach of Florida after all the accusations of sexual harassment and all the stuff that he's been doing on campus, supposedly, allegedly. He still has his job, and ever since this has come out, Florida's turned a corner like they're playing with a vengeance. Like they don't know if this guy's going to be around or not. I think he's coaching him in a different aspect now. He's, he's coaching. He's coaching yeah. every minute of every day. Yeah. Now, he yeah, now he's back. no You're longer right. on the Gators coach. Now I'm coaching to keep my damn job. And if I get fired here, I got to find the next job. But Florida's a team to watch because they're playing with some more passion. Agreed, no doubt. But keep an eye on Auburn as well. This may be Bruce Pearl's best team from top to bottom. Broom, we know is yes. good. But Auburn's dangerous, and Bruce just has to figure out how to get past the first round as a 25-point favorite. Right? Exactly. Let's let's touch one second on on the NBA. Does anybody follow the NBA? I do. I, uh, my Knicks choked again last night. They could have been out here in Vegas on Saturday, and they uh, got up 14 early. I saw that. 14. Spread was 14. How did they lose that game? Yeah, they, you know, they didn't they, score enough points. How did they lose? How did they lose the 14? It's, it's, the, it's the Knicks. They haven't won since 72-73 for the love of God. So, I heard they have a great owner. Since we have so much Cleveland blood up here and in this audience, what do you think of the Cavs? I think the Cavs have a chance to win the whole thing and they get Max Struess back, who hasn't even played this year. He'll be back uh, tomorrow. It's amazing how well they're doing. And a lot of people rate them as the best team. Well, that's the thing. Max Struess one of their starters. So all of a sudden, you played all these games, you start undefeated, run like that, and you got the best record in the NBA, and now one of your starters comes back. So now you got depth. Team stays healthy. They're well coached. I like this Cavalier team a lot. And next week, Jay Cornage and Lou Fanichico, I believe I pronounced his name. I probably not probably butchered it like hell, even though I'm an Italian. Fanichico? Fanichico, I don't know. Fanichico. But good luck on your bets. Yes. Jay Cornegay. Jay Cornegay. Jay Cornegay. You Jay me, Cornegay. Jay. Jay's the greatest, man. He's I, coming. I ran that Westgate for a long time. Him and his wife, Pam, beautiful lady. 
And I will say this, my daughter's here and I told her to come out here because there is no better pizza in Las Vegas than this freaking place right here. I got a large pizza to go and I made sure I had five, six slices to go after I had about four there. <laughs> Albert, Albert Scalia is a phenomenal guy and he told me this is as close to New York pizza, Kenny, as you're ever gonna see. And he is darn right and I love it. And just, I don't even need the pepperoni or the sausage, which I love. You can give me an extra cheese pizza and I'm good to go. Ken, thanks so much for coming back on the panel. Thank you, Tommy, appreciate you guys. Ray, Jim, thanks Jim, for coming thank on. You as well. Thank you guys, appreciate it. Jim, good luck on your bets this weekend. Everybody out there, good luck on your bets. We're gonna give away the wine as soon as we get off the air. We'll see you next week right here from Dom DeMarco's at noon for the Jim Feist Pro Football Handicapping Show. My name is Tommy Canelli. Oh, we got a quick question, go ahead. Who do you guys like to win in the college football championship? <coughs> college Oregon. football. Oregon? Yep. Uh, you know, said, or, or I'm, I'm actually good friends with Jerry Allen, uh, the voice of Oregon for 35 years. Indoors, Oregon still, the, the track meet. That's why they beat Penn State. But Penn State came with, I mean, like I said, if that game was outdoors last week, I'll take Penn State all day. Who's right? your second and third team? Uh, well, I'm not, even, I'm not even saying Oregon. I'm saying, here's what, I'm going to call an upset that's going to blow you guys away. It might be the same team I'm thinking. I think I can win. I think they can win the whole thing. The Ohio State University. No. 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 I'm just saying in the first game, in the first game, I think this game will, will shock a lot of people, but I think Indiana is going to beat Notre Dame. Woo! I'll, oh. go on, I'll go on record right here and say Boise State will be in the championship. I'll be at the, I'll be at the Boise State game on what December 31st. <laughs> I'm telling you, and, and Boise State will be in the NCAA championship. My early upset is Clemson. I think Clemson wins. All right. Oh my God. We got, a lot of teams, a lot of things. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye, everybody. You got to all these underdogs. Throw us a game. <laughs>